Hi, I'm Debbie with Mixing Publishing, and we are resuming our video series. We're going to go and tackle the questions that has been posted on our video series. This is from a person, I'm not sure I'm going to say this right, it looks like CRAI, but it's K-R-A-I. Mm -hmm. And this person has commented several times on um, a number of our videos. This comment says, if I recall correctly, in the CVD process, the method that is used to pulling apart graphene from copper involves dissolving the latter with acid. Could be made instead by introducing, inducing a negative charge on in the side of the copper that is in contact with the graphene. Would that repel the sea of electrons and thus the graphene sheet? Mm, right, okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's unpack some of that just for viewers who might not be familiar with some of the technology, uh, the terminology here. Yeah. Uh, my instinct always is to explain acronyms. So CVD stands for chemical vapor deposition. And basically what you do is you have a, a surface, a metal surface, and you're quite right, it is copper that's used most of the time. And you bring uh, a carbon containing gas close to the surface, get it very hot. Uh, usually methane or methane, as you pronounce it, probably, Debbie. And uh, what happens is that the copper allows, um, acts as a catalyst, so it allows the carbon to get down close to the surface and the hydrogen from the methane to come off. So hydrogen gas goes, and then the carbon starts to land on the surface. And where it lands on the surface, it coats it in this two-dimensional chicken wire of graphene. Once the surface is covered, the reaction stops. So you have a self-limiting reaction. So that's how we get one atom thick layer one atom thin layer of graphene on the copper. Now, the, the question is quite well informed because now how do you get the graphene off? Well, if you put some sticky tape on and pull it off, that's one way, but you might damage it. The other, another way which is used uh, by probably the majority of processes at the minute is to dissolve the copper away underneath. Mm -hmm. They don't actually use acid, although some do. Um, ferric chloride, I think it's, um, it's got acidic properties used as to etch away the copper. So you're then left with the metal that's dissolved, leaving graphene floating on the surface of the liquid. And then you bring another surface, maybe plastic or something like that, in contact with the graphene floating on the surface and peel it off. Uh, as your um, uh, correspondent, uh, well, our viewer observed, that's quite a complicated and slow process. Could yeah. you do it another way? And it's quite a clever idea. Graphene we know conducts electricity. Copper we know conducts electricity. And I think what he's getting at is, if we can get an electric current into the graphene and possibly into the copper separately, then we'd increase the electron flow. And would those electrons then repel each other because they're both negative? And mm -hmm. would the graphene float off the surface and we could then peel it away? And the honest answer is I don't know. Um, I, my instinct is I don't think so because there's something else going on as well as the electrostatic force of the electrons. We've got another electrostatic force called van der Waals forces, which we talk about, which is anchoring the uh, graphene sheet to the surface of the copper. And that is going to resist that um, uh, repulsive method, uh, repulsive effect of the electricity. So it's a nice idea. I'm sure somebody must have tried this. I think the other, the other issue is it's very difficult to, to actually make a connection to the graphene and the copper separately to get your electric, electric current in. So I think there's a technical issue there as well. We'll have a look into this. If somebody's come up with this idea, we'll find out and we'll tell you. But my instinct is at the moment, I think the van der Waals force would get in the way and stop it from uh, peeling off. Okay, so the van der Waals would make it too strong of a hold. Yeah, uh, my, that's my guess. Individually, the van der Waals force is very weak, but remember graphene is all surface area. And there's a vast area for lots of little forces to multiply up and that would lock it together. And I think that's what's the main force holding it onto the surface of the copper. All right. Uh, let's see. Graphene, the third wave. This is an interesting one. This is from Jonathan. Jonathan Smith says, how about you start with actually inventing an accessible method of pro pro production of it? in sheet right well that is a really good point um so when you talk about sheet graphene we're not talking about graphene powders we're talking about large area sheets of graphene on copper foil this chemical vapor deposition process and uh, if you have a look at some of our other videos on the cv uh, bottom up ones isn't it debbie yes. um 
And we already know there are uh, at least three different companies out there, all of whom have been working in secret. We've got a company in America. We've got one in, actually two in Korea. Um, and they're capable of making graphene continuously on a roll-to-roll process at scales of kilometers at widths around about 400 mil, 300 mil, so about just over a foot wide. They're capable of making at a meter, uh, no, two meters a minute is the fastest one at the moment, isn't it, Debbie? Wow, well, yes. So and, is, and, um, have a look at our videos, and uh, if you can't find them, uh, have a chat with Debbie, and I'm sure you'll point them in the right direction, because the, the pace of change in this area is dramatic. Graphene, sheet graphene is being produced industrially right now. So Adrian, thank you very much for your and time. Thank you to the viewers for sending in the questions because it takes